So these three things are the bare components of the soil moisture detection system that you saw at the beginning of this video. So we of course have our soil moisture probe, which we used a capacitive soil moisture probe because it doesn't corrode as easily as other soil moisture probes. We have this liquid crystal display, our LCD, to display what our moisture probe is reading. And then right here in the middle, we have a Raspberry Pi Pico, which is just the Raspberry Pi, uh, the Raspberry Pi's microcontroller that they've made. And so what basically happens is this is in our soil. It takes a reading, it sends it to the Pico. The Pico says, okay, let me display this on this LCD here. So now I'm gonna try to explain to all of you how my wiring is set up on this little breadboard and with my Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, I'm not an expert on all this, this is my first project that I've ever done, so bear with me if I explain something incorrectly. But right now I'm going to be showing you the capacitive soil moisture sensor and then how that's wired to the Pico itself through the breadboard. So I try my best to uh, color coordinate with my wire so that it helps me not get so confused, but with the black wire we have it going to our ground pin, which is right here. Then this red wire is going to our 3 volt out pin. So this is all the only thing required to power this is 3 volts. So we have that in our 3 volt pin right there. And then all the way down here, this is just in one of our GPIO pins. So it's a GPIO pin 27, I believe. Or excuse me, it's GPIO pin 26. So that is just how we are communicating with our sensor. So now to show all of you how the LCD is wired. It's got one more wire than the soil moisture probe, um, but we use these top three on the left side, which you can see on this little layout. Sorry if it's blurry, but that's GPIO pin 0, 1, and then ground that it's going to there. So that's those three pins. Then you might be able to see it, but this white wire over here is actually going to our 5 volt pin over here which is right there, that V-Bus. So that's the wiring layout of the two devices that are connect to our, connected to our breadboard, and then of course that connects them to the Pico. So what I have displayed on my web browser here is Thawney, which helps us run MicroPython. And MicroPython is just Python for microcontrollers like the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is the code that I use to uh, basically make this whole system function. Of course, it's not just my code. It's a merge of two main codes that I found on the internet that help us display this on our LCD. So up top, you see all my imports and everything that you kind of have to do before you start coding. Uh, if you've ever used Python, you might already know this. If you haven't, you might not. But down here is when we actually get into some of the important stuff. So whenever you get the soil moisture sensor, it'll be reading in values in the 2600s and up, dependent on what solution the moisture probe is in. So here you see the minimum moisture value. I took that value because uh, that is what the soil moisture probe was reading in the air. So you set that to minimum because obviously it's not in any water so that's going to be at zero. And then I put the soil moisture probe in water and then I put that to its maximum moisture level because it was reading at that level there. Then I have read delay set to 10, so it's reading every 10 seconds. Uh, you could probably put this to once per day. It's really not necessary that you have your moisture probe and your Pico working that hard. And then finally, we just have our simple while true statement. Uh, and then this prints it on our LCD. So you see here it says soil moisture. That is just what uh, is displayed on the LCD. So it says soil moisture here, or LCD will say that. We could change that to whatever we wanted. Uh, say we wanted to change it to Shabby Shack. 
and then we ran that. As you can see there, now it says Shabby Shack. So I could change that to whatever. Of course, I have it to soil moisture because that's what our sensor is reading. But yeah, it's pretty neat. And then down here, that's just showing our what's actually being read and then a little percentage sign so that we know it's in percentage. As you can tell, the, the script is super short, but there are some other things that you have to do. If you were to just copy and paste this code, it would not work. You would need to uh, follow some, some code that I'll link in the description or follow some videos so that you can get all of this to work. So as you can see right now, our soil moisture level is only about 0.36%. So it's less than 1%, which is normal because our soil moisture sensor is in the air right now. But then whenever we put our moisture sensor into water, that is when our soil moisture should go up into the 90th percentile range. And then with the uh, box that I made to kind of hide the whole, all the wires and the mechanism and everything, I just bought a piece of plywood and I have a saw cutter and so I just cut some thin pieces and then I cut them at an angle as you can see right here so that I could then glue them together so that it looks a bit uh, more flush and I guess pretty in my opinion so you don't have the edges popping out and then I hollowed out this just with a dremel tool and I hollowed this out so that as you can see here this LCD fits pretty well in there and then I'll show all of you what that looks like with the LCD turned on. And so this is what it looks like with the LCD in there. I know it's a bit bright and it's not really focused, but it says soil moisture and then it says how much. So this is the plant pot I'll be using. I really like uh, Spanish tile and just designs like this. I think it's really pretty. Um, so I'm using that one. So now that I've finished my box here, as you can see, it's all done. It's got the top panel for the plant to sit. And then of course under it, we've got everything hidden, all the wires and everything. Uh, I'm going to start wiring everything together so it's not super complicated. I left this crack here again so that the wires could come up and run through so we have our moisture probe that will be the only thing that is showing. And then under it we'll have our Raspberry Pi Pico, a little breadboard, and then we'll have all of this connected. Alrighty, so we just completed the final steps. We, of course, added our soil, put our moisture probe into the soil, and added a little plant to our pot. Thank y'all so much for watching me make this soil moisture detection system. I had a lot of fun, and I plan on making some more Raspberry Pi projects in the future. Please feel free to comment down below if you have any questions regarding this, and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you.